Welcome to the Driving the World podcast series. I'm your host, Cully Holland. Today we have Anisha Hoffield back on the podcast from our Southeast Regional Engineering Group. We'll be discussing gear lubrication. Hey, Anisha, thanks for joining us again. Hey, glad to be back. Awesome. So today we're going to talk a little bit, bit, a little bit about our gear lubrications and how they relate to uh, some of the failures that might occur in the field. So we're just going to jump right in because as one of our previous podcasts talked about and a lot of our customers know, we have multiple mounting positions ranging from M1 to M6. And I have a feeling they might relate to our gear lubrication and some things that might go awry in the field. Yeah. So first of all, the importance of the mounting position is to cover all those gears in oil. So every mounting position has the right amount of oil to cover all the gears, make sure everyone's lubricated and working how it should. It also takes an effect of the breather and making sure it's in the right proper position to release how it should whenever pressure builds up. So we're already talking about it. We have some lubrication and we have a breather for pressure. And I can imagine that if we start ordering gear units or gear motors in a certain mounting position and then put them in another mounting position, there's gonna be some metal on metal action or possibly our breathers may not be able to function properly. Right, so whenever you order a gearbox for a certain level, say it's M1, it's gonna have a lot less oil than an M4, which the gearbox standing up. In that case, all the oil is gonna go down to the bottom and the pinion gear up at the top is gonna be completely dry. At that point, you're gonna get metal on metal and you're gonna see extreme heat on those two gears, on the pinion gear and the number two gear. The shaft is gonna get extremely hot on the motor and you'll actually start to see metal deformation on both the number two wheel and the pinion gear. So whenever you're changing mounting positions, it's always good to make sure you're supplying the correct amount of oil with the new mounting position. So it sounds like incorrect mounting position equals additional heat, and uh, additional heat is a not good situation for uh, running our gear motors at any speed. Yep. And uh, we briefly mentioned the breather, and you said for it to function properly, it is placed in the gearbox dependent on the mounting position. So what could happen, let's say the mounting position is not what the customer ordered, so now it's in a different orientation and the breather is at the bottom of the gearbox. What What is that gonna do to our gear motor? Right, so at that point, the breather is then blocked with oil if it's being flipped around almost, and it's not gonna release properly. So you're gonna have a buildup of pressure to where you're either gonna see oil coming out of the breather or out of the seals themselves, and you could possibly have seal failures. And we are looking to keep all of the oil inside the gearbox. So yeah. those are two things that we definitely wanna avoid. So that sounds like two major issues that can be avoided by a properly ordering a mounting position or being aware that if you change a mounting position, the amount of lubrication will either need to increase or decrease depending on how you're moving. And so we got that covered and I'm just thinking back, back to some applications I've seen and I know our gear motors go anywhere from freezers all the way up to sitting right next to ovens and bakeries. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine the lubrication is going to be the same for a gear motor and a freezer as well as one sitting next to a thousand degree oven. Yeah. So you have very two extreme environments there. Right. And the difference there is going to be the different viscosities in the gear motors. Um, with a freezer application, you're overcoming the oil almost freezing and downtime, having to overcome that. So you don't want a really thick oil then it then has to work harder to come overcome. Then when you're over by a heater, you're then, it's super hot. So you need an oil that's going to withstand that temperature. And so just talking about different ambient temperatures and how they affect the oil, of course, mounting position is still going to have all the factors play in. But do our customers have options in different kind of lubrications for some of these extremes or is it kind of one size fit all and we just make it work? Yeah, so we have a ton of different options. So if you're inside with just a normal ambient temperature, kind of room temperature, we're probably going to recommend mineral oil. Okay. 
depending on how fast the gearbox is running. Um, if you're in a freezer, it's probably going to be more of a synthetic with a different type of viscosity. And then if you're in, um, like, close to an oven with an extreme heat, you're also going to get a synthetic oil, but, again, a different type of synth viscosity to handle the extreme heat. Okay, so it sounds like the ambient temperature is definitely something our customers need to relay to us when we're sizing gearboxes yep. so that we can get the proper lubrication the first time, first go around. Yeah, and especially because whenever you do, if you have a mineral oil and you put it out in the hot sun and it's over baking, the oil is going to deform and it's going to cause those same issues that we saw with it pretty much running dry as well. So if it's missized or misused, there's going to be a breakdown of the oil and it won't be able to function function properly? Yep. Okay. So with our lubrications, is there anything we need to consider about how often they get changed? Yeah. So it's super important to, we have an oil chart where it's going to tell you where your oil bath temperature sits and how many hours you run for. And it also depends on the oil. So mineral oil is going to have to be changed faster than synthetic oil and depending on the temperature as well. So that's super important to know how hot your gearbox is getting whenever you're taking in mind of oil changes. That is great to know. So I guess one last thing is let's say our customer ordered a box with mineral oil. He talks to his SEW representative and finds out he needs synthetic oil. Can he just add synthetic oil, uh, top it off? Like how does the changeover process work with these different lubrications? Yep, so we have a procedure to do, a recommended procedure for each different lubrication that you're going into. So if you're going from mineral to synthetic or synthetic back to mineral, it includes a wash down and it's different for each one. So I recommend getting in contact with your SEW rep or the engineering department, and we can kind of show you the best route to go. Well, fantastic. Well, that sounds like a lot that uh, lubrication plays in the role of avoiding possible failures in the field. Is there anything else you want to add or touch on, or have we just about covered it all? I think that's about it. Well, fantastic. We yeah. really appreciate you showing up and spending some more time with us. I hope you have a great day. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me.